This morning, we are out here on Liberty Lake. It's pretty rainy, so not exactly sure how the footage is gonna turn out today, but hopefully the rain stops here. There's actually not a lot of people here. We thought it was gonna be packed, but there's not really anybody here, so we have the dock. We're just gonna bank fish today, so hopefully we can catch some trout or something. I'd be happy with anything, to be honest. I'm gonna get rigged up here. It's like seven o'clock. Apologize, morning voice. Yeah, we're just gonna bottom fish and throw a spinner at the same time and see if we can catch a German brown. Water looks clear. And yeah, I guess we'll just throw a bottom fishing rig out this way so I can cast over here. Just heard a turkey gobble. So for today, I'm going pretty simple. Um, just cause mainly it's just gonna be trout that we're gonna catch today. So I do have my Ned rig just in case. And then uh, I just have a bunch of like, just a bunch of like spinners. Got some jigging wraps in here. So I'm gonna throw a spinner in one hand and then I'm gonna use power bait on the other rod. But I already have a spinner tied on so. Let's uh let's get our bottom fishing rig ready to go. So if you don't know what the Carolina rig is, it's pretty simple. So pretty much your main line is up here, which is this yellow line right here. It's got a half ounce egg sinker which is free floating on your, your line. You got a bead got a swivel then you got a six pound test to a treble hook this is a size 16 treble hook and my main line for this one is 15 pounds but I normally use 10 pound but since I had 15 pound on this reel right here then that's what we're gonna go with to start we're just gonna get some power bait and again if you watch my other trout fishing videos you don't need a lot of power bait all you want to do is just have enough to cover the hook but don't have so much extra where it prevents you from getting a good hook set. So we're just gonna start with a sherbet color power bait. And we're just gonna take a little bit and we're just gonna roll it up into a little ball. Once you have it into a ball, just slide it onto your hook. And then just kinda like push it down onto the hook and make sure the power bait sticks onto your hook good. And that's pretty much it. Just throw it out there. I only have like a 24 inch leader, so. It's not the longest, but here it's pretty shallow. Whew, that thing flew. And so here, so if you guys look, there's these holes right here. Well, it's essentially a rod holder. So we can just stick that in there, reel up our slack and that's good to go. Now I just gotta pay attention to that. As you guys can see, switch lakes. We'll see if we can catch some trout. Ned because we are running low on time because just decided to make a trip after church and that's what we're doing today so we don't have a lot of daylight so I'm just gonna put my panther martin away and then I'm gonna tie on this little thing which is called a Ned rig because this thing it doesn't disappoint I'm not going to say it's always going to catch you fish, but you know, a lot of times when certain lures aren't working, you pull out the net rig and it's just a game changer. So when it comes to uh, tying knots, the, my go-to knot is the uni knot, which I'm not going to show you guys here, but I mean, there's a lot of tutorials out on YouTube that can teach you guys, but that's usually my go-to knot. Sometimes I'll tie the polymer knot and stuff like that. but. For me, I just like the uni knot because 
you know it's it's pretty strong and it's just easy to tie all right well there it is i'm just using a black a black worm for my presentation and then i have like a like a 18 inch six pound mono leader tied to 10 pound power pro braid and just using a 2500 reel with a 7.2 medium fast rod so all i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna cast I'm just going to slowly bounce my Ned Rig back towards me. Launch it way out there. So right here, there's a lot of weeds and a lot of those weeds are pretty strong. So don't want to really get snagged in there. But with the Ned Rig, you really have no choice because you're bouncing it off the bottom. So. All I'm doing is I'm just twitching it up. It's just a bunch of repetitive U's where it just goes up, hits the bottom, and then up, hits the bottom, up, and hits the bottom. Just doing that and then sometimes I'll have occasional pauses. And a lot of times when you pause your Ned Rig after doing that U pattern, a lot of times that's when the fish is gonna pick it up. But again, today we're kind of just testing out the lakes, you know, cause snow is melting and uh, we're all just anxious for spring to get here and you know have some more active fish oh no that's exactly what I don't want thank you came off every time you get a snag you always want to check your line don't want to set the hook on a big fish and then just have your line snap because you didn't check it. Fish on fish on baby fish on is this a bass it feels nice it feels way nice oh my gosh that might be a bass dude I have no idea what this is is that a carp Oh my gosh, please don't come off. Please don't come off. Dude, my heart is racing. I have no idea what this is. It's right here. It's right here. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's fighting pretty good. Oh no, I feel the rocks. I, dude, that's the first largie of the year. Oh my gosh, let's go. I'm so pumped right now. First large melt of the year. Look at that beast. Oh. Okay, maybe it's like a three pounder, but that's the first large melt of the year. Look at that beast. I was so pumped. That's the first large melt of 2020. Oh. It's been so long since I've seen a bass that it looked big, but it's only like a, it's only like a, maybe, yeah. Maybe five, dude. Dude, I don't know. Does he have a scale? All right, let's see. Official scale. Four pounder. That's what I thought. 414. All right, we're going to release this girl. She's getting ready to spawn, so make sure she's, uh, she's alive. Yep, she goes telling you guys you guys don't have a net rig in your tackle box you're missing out just making sure my line is good so here's the truth the water today here is so murky that I probably don't even need a leader and my leader is actually already pretty short and it's pretty frayed right here so I'm actually just gonna take off my mono leader and just I'm just gonna run straight braid you know it's just a little bit stronger and again I don't think uh 
visibility is going to be a problem here. So if you've never used a Ned rig before, this is pretty much all you need. You just need your soft plastic and you just need a Ned rig hook. So this is made by Z-Man and uh, I like this particular hook because of this, uh, this style of the bait holder instead of a wire one. This one, I like it because it just holds on to your bait so much better and it doesn't destroy your, your soft plastic as fast. This right here is just a four inch worm, a four inch yum dinger that I cut in half. So pretty much all you're gonna do is you're just gonna measure your worm. You just wanna see where the hook pops out. And once you know that, then you just hook it right through the middle and uh, come right about where you think it's gonna expose the hook. And uh, that's pretty much it right there. Now you just gotta tie it on and then you're just gonna pretty much bounce this little guy off the bottom and again for those of you who haven't seen this is my Ned rig box so I have like blue watermelon red brown uh, green green watermelon pumpkin and all sorts of stuff so we're gonna give this little guy a try you want to be what is that? Don't, don't, I'll land it for you. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That's a good three pounder, dude. Let's go. Dude, way to stick with it, dude. Heck yeah, way to yeah, stick man. with it. Let's go. There it goes. Go, dude, way to go. That was a hit. That was a trout. That was 100. Oh, fish on. Fish on, baby. Fish on. Fish on. Let's go. Trout. Catching cook successful. He ain't the biggest, but look at that. I knew the net rig would not fail me. Oh, we are gonna keep him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bonk him. Put him out of his misery. And then uh, we'll get back to fishing. All right, so we've been fishing for a while now and uh, the bite just kind of died off, both the trout and the largemouth. But we probably had like a 25 minute interval where the bite was pretty consistent. So I just decided to come over here and try a different area. But can we just, like, can we just appreciate this? Like, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but at the bare minimum, I just hope that these videos encourage you guys to get outside because at the end of the day, like that's really my my main goal behind these videos is just to inspire people to get outdoors and you know, spring is coming. The grass is greening, the weather is warming up, lakes are thawing out, more opportunities to fish are here. So I'm going to put the camera down, go down here and uh, cast a few times, see if we can't pull in another fish or two or three. <laughs> So for this catch and cook, we're not doing a full blown meal. We're actually just doing an experiment uh, because this is something that's been on my mind. This is a recipe that I wanna get dialed in before fall hunting season because I think if I can get this recipe dialed in, then this is probably what I'm gonna start taking with me when I'm out hunting because I don't know if you ever had a, like tuna salad with crackers, but 
I absolutely love tuna salad with crackers. So I figured instead of having to go to the store and constantly paying money to buy tuna salad, I figured, you know what? Why not try to make it yourself? So that's what I'm doing today. With that little trout that we caught, we're just gonna experiment with it. So what I have here is a very simple way of, I guess, making or at least trying to make a tuna salad or fish salad. So again, I don't know if this is gonna work. That's what we're experimenting. But uh, when I was doing research and I went to the store, I mean, this looked pretty close to what the ingredients are in for a tuna salad. So this is just your uh, sandwich spread, like a relish for your sandwich. So I really hope it works because if it works, then I can just be lazy with this recipe. And if it doesn't work, then uh, I guess we'll have to try again next time. So this is actually normally how I grew up eating trout when my mom made fish for us. But today we're just gonna try to add it with this right here and we'll see how it turns out. I'm actually kind of anxious to see. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel off the meat from the bone. That way we have boneless meat. That's the skeleton right there. Throw this away. All right, so it's a pretty simple recipe. It probably took me no more than eight minutes. So again, just to recap, cook the fish with salt and then uh, just use this relish and just take the meat off the bone and just break the meat all apart and then just mix it around with this relish right here. Just mix it all together and just throw on a little cracker like this. Uh, I would have preferred to have Ritz crackers, but when I went to the store, I couldn't find Ritz, so I just used some salting crackers. So it kind of reminds me of a tuna salad but it doesn't quite look like a tuna salad but i'm pretty anxious to try so yeah without further ado let's just give this a try wow that is actually pretty good that actually tasted a lot better than i was expecting now in terms of comparing this to a tuna salad like I can see that there's a similarity between the tuna salad and what I have here, but it's not quite the same as a tuna salad. Like I wouldn't put this up there with a the tuna salad, but shoot, if I was really lazy and I was just saying, you know what, this is what I'm going to pack for lunch when I go hunting, like I would not mind this at all. The presentation probably doesn't look the best, but sometimes you just, you just got to eat it. So. So again, this was just an experiment. I just wanted to see if I could imitate tuna salad by going lazy and just using a ready to go relish. And the truth be said, it's not quite as good as a tuna salad, but it's actually not disappointing either. Like this is actually pretty good. It's not quite what I was looking for. So definitely I'll probably have to do a tuna, like a legit tuna salad recipe in the future with other fish. But for a first attempt at trying to replicate a tuna salad, I'd say it was a success. If I had to rate this on a scale of one to 10 with one being horrible and 10 being good, I'd probably give it an eight. Like it's actually not bad. It's actually pretty good. So yeah, again, this is just an experiment and I'm just trying to get my recipes dialed in right now so that come hunting season, I just know exactly what I need to do and get my food ready. So that way I don't have to keep going to the store and buying lunch and stuff like that. So yeah, that's kind of the whole gist of this catch and cook. Spring's coming up, so we'll definitely be able to diversify the species we are catching and what we're able to hunt. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. What the heck? <laughs> I told you, dude. <laughs> I was like, what in the world happened? <laughs> yeah, I was talking about yesterday. <laughs>